Tecumseh, TKMSE, TKMSI, Tecumse, Tecumse was a Native American leader of the Shawnee in a large tribal confederacy which opposed the United States during Tecumseh's war and became an ally of Britain in the War of 1812. Tecumseh grew up in the Ohio country during the American Revolutionary War and the Northwest Indian War, where he was constantly exposed to warfare. In 1808, they settled Prophetstown in present-day Indiana, with a vision of establishing an independent Native American nation east of the Mississippi under British protection. Tecumseh worked to recruit additional tribes to the Confederacy from the southern United States. During the War of 1812, Tecumseh's Confederacy allied with the British and helped in the capture of Fort Detroit. Prior to the raid, Chief Tecumseh delivered a powerful speech upon a rock that is preserved to this day at Fort Malden. After the U.S. Navy took control of Lake Erie in 1813, the Native Americans and British retreated. American forces caught them at the Battle of the Thames and killed Tecumseh in October 1813. With his death, his confederation disintegrated, and the Native Americans had to move west again. Yet Tecumseh became an iconic folk hero in American, Aboriginal and Canadian history. Family background Tecumseh's father was named Puck Shinwa, a minor Shawnee war chief of the Kisboko Band and the Panther Clan of the tribe. According to some sources, Puck Shinwa's father was Muscogee and his mother was Shawnee either because his father died when he was young, or because among the Creeks a husband lives with his wife's family. Puck Shinwa was considered a Shawnee, according to John Sugden. However, the truth about Puck Shinwa's ancestry must remain a mystery, and he reports further period testimonies stating that the Kisboko chief was reputed to have had a British father. Tecumseh's mother was Methatask, Puck Shinwa's second wife. She is believed to have been Shawnee through her father and her mother, possibly of the Pekawai band and the Turtle clan. Some traditions hold that she was Creek, because she had lived among that tribe prior to marriage. Some hold that she was Cherokee, having died in old age living among that tribe. Still others hold that she was a white captive, as family stories claim that Puck Shinwa had been married to a white captive. Tecumseh's great-great-grandfather on his mother's side, Straight Tail Miro Weopesa, was a prominent chief of the Pekawai and the Turtle clan. Shawnee lineage was recorded paternally, which made Tecumseh a member of the Kisboko. At the time Tecumseh's parents married, the tribe was living somewhere near modern Tuscaloosa, Alabama. The tribe had lived in that region alongside the Creek tribe since being driven from their homes in the Ohio River Valley by the Iroquois during the 17th century Beaver Wars. About 1759, the Pekawai band decided to move west into the Ohio country. Not wanting to force his wife to choose between him and her family, Puck Shinwa decided to travel north with her. The Pekawai founded the settlement at Chillicothe where Tecumseh was likely born. During the 1760s, Puck Shinwa took part in the French and Indian War. Early life Tecumseh was born about March 1768. Popular tradition locates his birthplace in Old Chillicothe east of Dayton. As the Shawnee did not settle in Old Chillicothe until 1774, however, Sugden comes to the conclusion that Tecumseh was almost certainly born either in a different Chillicothe set up along the Scioto River, near the present-day city of Chillicothe, Ohio, or in another village the Kisboko had erected not far away along a small tributary stream of the same river, where his family moved just before or not long after his birth. During Tecumseh's boyhood, white frontiersmen slew his father Puxin were at the Battle of Point Pleasant during Lord Dunmore's war in 1774. The frontiersmen had crossed onto Indian land in violation of a recent treaty. Tecumseh resolved to become a warrior like his father and to be a fire spreading over the hill and valley, consuming the race of dark souls. At age 15, after the American Revolutionary War ended in 1783, 
Tecumseh joined a band of Shawnee who aimed to stop the white invasion of their lands by attacking settlers' flatboats traveling down the Ohio River, from Pennsylvania. In time, Tecumseh came to lead his own band of warriors. For a while, these Indian raids became so effective that river traffic virtually ceased. Frontier Conflicts the Shawnee were military allies with the British during the American Revolutionary War and repeatedly battled the Americans. Following his father's death, his family moved back to Chief Blackfish's nearby village of Chillicothe. The town was destroyed in 1779 by Kentucky militia in reprisal for Blackfish's attack on Boone's Bearer. His family fled to another nearby Kispoko village, but this was destroyed in 1780 by forces under the command of George Rogers Clark. The family moved a third time to the village of Sanding Stone. That village was attacked by Clark in November 1782, and the family moved to a new Shawnee settlement near modern Bellefontaine, Ohio. Violence continued on the American frontier after the Revolution as the Northwest Indian War. A large tribal confederacy, known as the Wabash Confederacy, which included all the major tribes of Ohio and the Illinois country, formed to repel the American settlers from the region. As the war between the Confederacy and the Americans grew, Tecumseh became a warrior and took an active part fighting along with his older brother Chicksucker, an important war leader who essentially raised Tecumseh and Ten Squaw Tower after their parents' early deaths. Their older sister, Tecumapes, was also very important to their upbringing. In early 1789, Tecumseh traveled south with Chicksucker to live among and fight alongside the Chickamauga faction of the Cherokee. Accompanied by 12 Shawnee warriors, they stayed at Running Water, where Chicksucker's wife and daughter lived. There Tecumseh met Dragon Canoe, a famous leader who was leading a resistance movement against U.S. expansion. Chicksucker was killed while leading a raid, and Tecumseh assumed leadership of the small Shawnee band and subsequent Chickamauga raiding parties. Tecumseh returned to Ohio in late 1790. Afterward, Tecumseh took part in several battles, including that of the 1794 Fallen Timbers. The Indians were defeated by the Americans, which ended the Northwestern Indian Wars in favor of the Americans. Despite this loss, Tecumseh refused to sign the Treaty of Greenville, in which the Indians ceded great portions of their Northwest Territory in exchange for goods valued at $20,000. Tent Square Tower Tecumseh eventually settled in what is now Greenville, Ohio, the home of his younger brother, Lalaway the car who later took the new name of Tent Square Tower. After difficult years as a young man who suffered from alcoholism, Tent Square Tower became a religious leader, known as the Shawnee Prophet. He advocated a return of the Shawnee and other American Indians to their ancestral lifestyle and rejection of the colonists and Americans. He attracted a large following among Indians who had already suffered major epidemics and dispossession of their lands. In 1805, Tenskwa Tawa led a religious revival following a series of witch hunts following an outbreak of smallpox among the Shawnee. His beliefs were based on the earlier teachings of the Lenape prophets, Skatamek and Neolin who predicted a coming apocalypse that would destroy the European-American settlers. Tensqua Tower urged Native Americans to reject the ways of the Europeans, to give up firearms, liquor, European-style clothing, to pay traders only half the value of their debts, and to refrain from ceding any more lands to the United States. The teachings led to rising tensions between the settlers and his followers. Opposing Tensqua Tama was the Shawnee leader Black Hoof, who was working to maintain a peaceful relationship with the United States. The earliest record of Tecumseh's interaction with the Americans was in 1807, when the U.S. Indian agent William Wells met with Blue Jacket and other Shawnee leaders in Greenville to determine their intentions after the recent murder of a settler. Tecumseh was among those who spoke with Wells and assured him that his band of Shawnee intended to remain at peace and wanted only to follow the will of the Great Spirit and his prophet. 
According to Wells' report, Tecumseh told him that the Prophet intended to move with his followers deeper into the frontier and away from American settlements. By 1808, due to increasing tensions with the encroaching settlers, Blackhoof demanded that Tenth Squaw Tower and his followers leave the area. Tecumseh was among the leaders of the group, and helped decide to move further northwest and establish the village of Prophetstown near the confluence of the Wabash and Tippecanoe rivers. The site was in Miami tribe territory, and their chief Little Turtle warned the group not to settle there. Despite the threat, the Shawnee moved into the region and the Miami left them alone. According to his brother's later account, Tecumseh was already contemplating a pan-tribal confederacy to counter American expansion into Indian-held lands. He was considered a natural and charismatic leader. Ten Squatawa's religious teachings became more widely known, as did his predictions on the coming doom of the Americans. His teachings attracted numerous members of other tribes to Prophetstown. They formed the basis of a sizable confederacy of tribes in the southwestern Great Lakes region. Tecumseh emerged as the primary leader of this confederation. Although it had started with warriors attracted by the religious appeal of his younger brother, relatively few in confederacy were Shawnee. The confederacy was made up primarily of other tribes. Ten Squatawa precipitated the Battle of Tippecanoe when he was overcome by his power and defied Tecumseh's orders to evacuate if Harrison approached the village. He instead pretended to have a vision and spoke to the tribes, in the voice of Monitor, their god, to attack as the white men could not hurt them. No one could die or would feel harm. The loss of this skirmish brought an end to the prophet, as he was disowned, and to the great plan by Tecumseh, as many tribes lost faith.